Hi, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of Ask Dr. Nick. My name is Dr. Nick Schmidlkoffer, and I work for the Neurologic Wellness Institute. And today, we are going to answer the question, who can benefit from hyperbaric oxygen therapy? And hyperbaric oxygen therapy is a relatively new tool um, for neurological conditions. Um, it's technically not FDA approved for neurological conditions, but there is a lot of research on the benefits and the possible benefits um, for more. And so I wanted to talk about a little bit today about what it is and then who can benefit. Um, real briefly, what it is, is we are going to get more oxygen in a hyperbaric oxygen chamber through feeding oxygen directly through a nose cannula but also by pressurizing the system to increase the um, amount of oxygen that can be delivered from the lungs into the blood and into the tissues. And therefore, we are basically flooding the body, including the brain, with oxygen. And that can be beneficial for multiple reasons. It can uh, improve energy levels by improving energy levels. It helps to decrease healing time. It helps to uh, clear inflammation that may be overriding the system. Um, and it can be especially important for um, like right after or acute conditions. <clears throat> so we'll talk real briefly um, about a bunch of different articles. And we'll start with one that's more general, and then we'll go from there. Um, so here, there you go, okay. So here, the first one is the neuroprotection effect of oxygen therapy, a systematic review and meta-analysis from 2017. Um, it reviews normal baric oxygen and hyperbaric oxygen. Normal baric means that the pressure is the same as the pressure in the outside air, as in one atmosphere. Hyperbaric means we increase the pressure. And so they looked at it for both stroke and traumatic brain injury. Um, they showed normal baric oxygen, showed improvements in reperfusion rate, while there's no favorable outcome in HPOT treatment, um, and that was for stroke patients. And then for patients with TBI, hyperbaric showed significant improvement in Glasgow coma scales, uh, reduction in overall mortality, um, and then normal baric may play a favorable role in brain metabolism, okay? So the reason I wanted to start with this one first, um, not necessarily for what it's looking at, but maybe because it's a good one to start with to show the, what is hyperbaric oxygen therapy. And so here we go. Oxygen accounts for 20.9% of the molecules in the air. Um, other ones are, it's mostly like nitrogen, a little bit of carbon, and some hydrogen. Um, and, but it's, oxygen is crucial for brain metabolism. And if it's only 20.9% in the air, maybe we can do, we can increase the amount of oxygen going into the nose and lungs with normal baric or hyperbaric. So normal baric is the administration of high concentrations of oxygen through a face mask at normal pressures, while hyperbaric, um, the patient breathes 100% oxygen uh, while being exposed to environmental pressures over one atmosphere, okay? Um, this can actually be 60 to 100%, and over one is generally like 1.2 1 to, 1 to 3 atmospheres. It kind of depends on um, the study. And generally, when it gets above 2 to 3, that's where you get more side effects. Um, but overall, it is very safe, uh, or it has very safe, both of them, and it has good efficacy, and that's what this article was going to look at, okay? Um, but I just want to kind of start there. Now we'll go to this next one. This is from February 2018, Journal of Neurotrauma. Uh, Hyperbaric oxygen therapy in the treatment of acute, acute severe traumatic brain injury. So basically, acute would be like within the first, you know, one to four weeks of um, of a traumatic brain injury or concussion. And so there is a lot of clinical and preclinical research on hyperbaric oxygen therapy with acute traumatic brain injury. So they looked at multiple studies, 30 studies within 30 days of TBI. They reported a positive treatment effects across a variety of outcome measures uh, with almost no safety concerns. No safety, which is awesome. Um, these results were consistent across other four reviewed clinical studies, thus providing preliminary clinical data supporting HBOT uh, therapy for acute traumatic brain injury, especially severe. Um, so this is important to emphasize like moderate to severe because moderate to severe is when 
people are either more unconscious or they can't communicate. Um, they, uh, they may not be able to move well, whatever it may be, their Glasgow coma scale is lower. And so um, there's evidence here through multiple uh, clinical and preclinical studies that HBOT can be used for severe uh, traumatic brain injury in the acute stage. Now we'll go to another one that's also about traumatic brain injury. And this one, Journal of uh, Head Trauma Rehabilitation for 2017, so it's one year prior to that last study. Um, this one did not look at specifically between acute and, uh, acute and chronic. Instead, they looked at studies that were looking at either mild TBI or moderate to severe TBI. So they found that all mild TBI studies demonstrated minimal bias and no statistically significant differences between hyperbaric therapy. So uh, basically what that means is that mild or just, uh, let's say, simple concussions may not benefit greatly from hyperbaric oxygen therapy. Um, this could be due to a variety of reasons. Maybe there's not enough inflammation to see that clinical benefit from a, what's a sham control, which is basically doing nothing. Um, however, we know that concussion patients a lot of the time can have a variety of symptoms. And so maybe the oxygen therapy is not doing the, is not the necessary um, stimulus or catalyst for that treatment. They may need other types of therapy. And uh, I've done plenty of, of videos in the past talking about these different therapies, whether that be um, eye movement therapy or vision therapy, neck stimulation, maybe neurofeedback, um, other electrical stimulation, vestibular rehab. Um, there are a variety of, of things that, that we can do for post concussion. Now, on the other hand, if we go back to the article, moderate to severe TBI studies were of mixed quality, and the majority of the results were favoring hyperbaric oxygen therapy compared with the standard care, which that's fantastic. So moderate to severe, meaning that um, you may have been in the hospital for a couple days. You, um, you had a Glasgow coma scale that was lower than 10 out of 15, um, or, or, or other reasons, okay? And um, so these are maybe more significant car accidents, more significant uh, um, traumas or blast injuries, if we're talking about veterans. Um, moderate to severe TBIs do have benefit from HBOT. Um, for the acute treatment of moderate to severe TBI, although methodology appeared flawed, across some studies because of the complexity of brain injury, hyperbaric may be beneficial as a relatively safe adjunctive therapy. So again, one, it's safe. Two, adjunctive therapy. So there may be other things besides, you might not be able to do hyperbaric and have some improvements. There may be other catalysts that are needed to, to further improve one's outcome for TBI. Okay, let's go over a couple other conditions. So this next one is hyperbaric oxygen therapy in fibromyalgia and diseases involving the central nervous system. And so this one looks specifically more at Parkinson's disease and fibromyalgia. And so the results they saw was Parkinson's disease show that it may play a neuroprotective role. Um, it can reduce the oxidative stress, the inflammation, and the neurodegeneration, and therefore protect against neuronal apoptosis, or basically program cell death that then leads to a lack of dopamine and then more uh, clinical outcomes of slowness of movements, rigidity, and maybe a resting tremor. Uh, it's also shown to improve the quality of life in fibromyalgia patients, um, maybe rectifying abnormal brain activity in pain-related areas. So just, just another one there. Um, another thing is ischemic stroke. And so this one's from 2018. The effect of hyperbaric oxygen therapy and the functional impairments caused by ischemic stroke. And so here they did each subject, so this was a clinical trial, did two four-week periods of hyperbaric oxygen therapy, total of 40 90-minute treatment sessions. Um, they saw improvements in cognition and executive function as well as physical abilities like gait or walking. Um, they showed improved sleep and quality of life following HPOT and they saw changes in biomarkers for inflammation and neuro recovery. And these improvements were also maintained up to three months after the last treatment, which means it doesn't stop once you stop the hyperbaric oxygen therapy. So I really like this study because it shows a lot of what um, the, the um, experimental or the, 
or the proposed reasons for it working, and that is decreased inflammation and improving neural recovery. And this led to the clinical outcomes of improved sleep, quality of life, improved movement like walking, and then obviously cognitive functions. So stroke patients as well can greatly benefit from hyperbaric oxygen therapy. Um, so I really like that one as well. And then the last one's an interesting one because this is an, as an adjunctive therapy for the treatment of malignancies like brain tumors or cancer like brain tumors. This is from 2016 in Medical Oncology. And basically we talk here that uh, hyperbaric oxygen therapy holds promise as an approach to overcoming a problem of oxygen deficiency in poorly oxygenated regions of neoplastic tissue. And so um, in anti-cancer therapy, hyperbaric oxygen alone gives a limited period of effect that is typically not applied by itself. However, um, it may be an adjunctive treatment along with other therapeutic modalities such as radiation or chemotherapy. So therefore, it can improve oxygen delivery to tissues that really aren't using oxygen. Um, and so they're, sorry, neoplastic tissues or cancers that aren't using oxygen. Um, hyperbaric oxygen in the treatment of brain tumors may be, may be necessary. Um, they include that administration of hyperbaric oxygen can provide clinical benefits in the treatment of tumors, um, like highly malignant gliomas. And so this combination may be favorable um, versus radiation alone. And so Again, this is just another article that is just showing benefit of hyperbaric oxygen therapy. Um, there, are, there are many more. Um, it's typical, um, it's more typical and FDA approved for like major wounds, skin burns, um, broken bones, but the neurological conditions are still being tested uh, both clinically and, and preclinically, uh, I mean with like rat studies or mouse studies. And so, Besides the ones seen here, other things that could be improved is people that have like severe anoxic brain injuries, which can be a traumatic brain injury. Um, also, kids with autism or cerebral palsy might be another one because that is generally a lack of oxygen to the brain. And that's what causes that um, or causes these, these symptoms in these children. So um, I hope you guys enjoyed this one. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. Uh, if not, have a great day. and. Stay healthy. Thanks.